This month marks the retirement of one of our friends and colleagues whose service to the school, to the university, and to chemistry will rarely be equaled. Bob Pettit is a giant in the world of natural products chemistry, in particular in the development of anti-cancer drugs. In an extraordinarily productive 55-year career at ASU, Bob published over 800 papers, was awarded over 60 patents, and wrote multiple books and book chapters. Bob's papers have been cited a remarkable 30,000 times, and his H index is almost 90. Bob was one of those who put the original Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at ASU on the map. Mort Monk would like to share some personal reminiscences and highlights of Bob's career. I have known Bob Pettit as a colleague and friend for nearly 70 years. So I really welcome this opportunity to say a few things about Bob that I don't ordinarily get a chance to say. Uh, Bob and I were graduate students together at Wayne State University. Even at that early stage, it was evident to me and some others that Bob already had a well-defined career path in mind, an academic career, and we all knew that his academic career would be cons consequential. When he got his first job, faculty position, at the University of Maine, I knew Bob would hit the ground running. I was wrong. I was wrong. Bob hit the ground in a bullet train, and it's been nonstop ever since. Initially at uh, University of Maine and then at Arizona State University, uh, Bob established himself as a pioneer and a major presence in the field of natural products chemistry. He also was someone who had a deep and a, a, he was deeply involved and successful in discovery and developing cancer chemotherapy agents. It was a natural marriage for Bob's two areas of interest. Marine organisms as a source of natural products was always of very special interest to Bob. His approach to his research was somewhat different and more comprehensive than that of his colleagues. In fact, Bob did his, only system, his own systematic collections of marine organisms. He actually did some of the diving himself, along with the students, and had some others doing collections for him. But Bob scoured the oceans, the seas, and the waterways of the world to find as many different marine organisms as is humanly possible. Once you have the organisms, you have the extraction of these marine organisms, the difficult job ahead is separating complex mixtures, really complex mixtures of compounds, getting the compounds, purifying the compounds, and then determining if any of them have any biomedical interest. And the way he did that was through a screening program developed right here at Arizona State University and carried out here at Arizona State University along with the help of some people in the microbiology department. Once you have the pure compound, you're not done. The next step is a challenging one requiring a lot of knowledge and experience determining the chemical structure of a complex, biologically interesting organic compound. Bob undertook that task, did it very well, and that still was not sufficient. The next task is total synthesis, requiring another creative and knowledgeable person 
in charge of something like that. And Bob was good, and his students derived a great deal of really valuable training in the process. These compounds are difficult to work with. They're complex structures. Nature is diabolical in its construction of these molecules, and Bob was very good at what he did. Such an unusual, comprehensive approach to this project is truly unusual in Bob's field. So what he did, again, was a, was a major, major achievement. Bob's published scientific publications are many, very many indeed but they are also foundational. There is so much more to tell about Bob's contributions, but I think you could already see what a productive and successful career that Bob has had. He's also been an inspiration to the graduate students that have studied with him and the postdoctoral associates who have come to work with Bob as well. Bob is admired and respected by scientists around the world, and I am one of them. I think that the chemical enterprise has not heard the last from Bob Pettit. But whatever Bob chooses to do, I wish him fair winds and smooth sailing. Bob deserves the very best. Thank you. The School of Molecular Sciences celebrates the achievements of a remarkable scientist and a true gentleman, and thanks Bob for his contributions to the intellectual growth and reputation of ASU as a place for excellence in chemistry.